Hi, students keeps asking me questions and today I'm discussing a question on expansion joint. I had already posted a video before on this topic. However, this is an additional point. In fact, more than a few points. So the first question is, do we need expansion joints in foundations? What should be this gap for the expansion joint and how do we cover the expansion gap between structures if we have provided that. Hi all, this is Premjit here from Sibilera.com. So today we are going to discuss expansion joint in foundation if it's needed or not and a few simple other points. So let me come to the primary question here from the student. He asks, my building is 60-65 meters long. I have provided two seismic joints. My question is, do I need to completely separate the foundation size I do in the superstructure or can substructure be all connected through tie beams? So here, first thing is if your building is more than 40-45 meters, the code suggests that you need to have an expansion joint. But with experience, it is seen that 40-45 meters is not such a huge length to generate considerable expansions. Also, you can do a temperature load analysis and then establish that the expansions are within limits and the additional stresses are within controllable limits and you can ensure that the minimal reinforcement that we are giving is good enough to take care of this expansion. Even if you look at IS-456, it says that in view of large number of factors involved in the deciding location spacing and nature of expansion joints the provision of expansion joint in reinforced cement concrete structures should be left to the discretion of the designer so as a designer you have certain discretion that can be taken based on your experience and what you have seen the structure performs and also note that this distance 45 meters is mentioned considering that you are not doing any additional analysis. So if you are doing an additional analysis, that can also be your discretion to do an additional analysis and then ensure that the stresses are accommodated. When you provide a joint, you are in fact relieving the stresses and when you are designing for that expansion, you are accommodating that stresses and in most cases the minimum steel that you are providing might be good enough until and unless the structure is very long and here it also says that the question is answered in the code itself the structure adjacent to the joint should preferably be supported on separate columns or walls but not necessarily on separate foundations so this means that the foundation can be same and the main reason for this is when you have a column a twin column say you have it can have a gap and then it can have a single foundation that shouldn't be a problem is what the code tells you and the reason is that in general your foundation structure is embedded in earth and then the temperature variation is not that great your foundation concrete is fully embedded inside soil so there is no temperature variation even if there is climatic changes or even if the temperature in the region is changing seasonally or on a daily basis whatever it is it is embedded in soil so there is no temperature variation experience for the foundation so because of that reason it's not really needed to have expansion joints in foundations now what should be this gap now this gap there are two considerations that you need to provide one is the expansion reason and for that you may not need a huge width for the joint it can be minimal it will not be critical in most cases because the seismic parameters comes into picture more than the temperature variation when it comes to the decision on the expansion joint gap what i mean to say is if the joint is employed in any structure and if it's a tall building generally what happens is the gap is going to be decided based on the deflection of the building when the ground moves, which is the earthquake, your buildings shall not pound each other. So this is a criteria. It can be that your one building on the left side can deflect towards the other and the other one also deflecting like this and it can pound each other and then create a very catastrophic effect. 
and this should be ruled out now how do you rule that out now to rule that out this gap between the two buildings should be a minimal value based on the calculations and the code 1893 2016 even 2002 also told you that in 2002 and 2016 you have the very same close 2016 is amended as well so i will just show you that close and then let us decide the gap between the expansion joints of the buildings so here in 1893-2016 separation between adjacent units so if you see here you can see that two adjacent buildings or two adjacent units of the same building with separation join between them shall be separated by a distance equal to r times the sum of story displacements delta 1 and delta 2 calculated as per 7 11 1 so this delta 1 and delta 2 is the deflection the maximum deflection of these buildings so if this building has delta 1 deflection and if this has delta 2 deflection then the code says that your gap should be r times so this is your response reduction factor i'm not going to explain what this is you can refer the seismic parameters and you will get the r value so it is 3 when you are doing a normal detailing and it can be 5 when you are doing a ductile detailing so if you are doing ductile detailing then 5 times the sum of your deflections of the buildings is what the code tells you now this is when your floor levels are at different levels and if your floor levels of both buildings are at the same level the code gives you another value and here i recommend you to look at the amendment or the older code because this is r1 multiplied by delta 1 r1 means your response reduction factor or r value of the first building and r2 means r value of the second building in most cases it will be the same so it will be either 5 or 3 depending upon if you are doing ductile detailing or not delta 1 is the deflection of the first building and delta 2 is the deflection of the other now it is very same as what it is mentioning here but then this is amended or if you refer the older code 2002 code it is divided by 2 when the floor is at the same level then you can take it as half of that so that's as per is 1893 2002 or the amendment for the 2016 so it is r1 delta 1 plus r2 delta 2 divided by 2 so you can do that when the floor levels are same so my point is that in most of the times this will be the critical factor than the gap needed expansion point of view pounding point of view you might need more and that's what will govern your expansion joint width now many students have asked me how do we cover the expansion gap and will it not leak when i have a joint so here i have taken out from the web some joint details so i'm not going to explain each and every connection but then you can see here that if this is your roof connection or if this is your roof level then you have two walls and the slab it could be columns as well it depends on your structure and then you can see an upstand wall given there with a dpc and a copping given and you also have a water bar given here to ensure that the water doesn't come inside so you can also see a slop here so that your water is drained away from the joint you can see the joint sealant so you can have different kinds of detailing for the expansion joint and then ensure that the water doesn't get in and leak so depending upon your structural position and situation your detailing needed for the water tightness or at the expansion joint the detailing also will differ so we will discuss about all that in a different blog some other time i will also show you some expansion joint filler materials available in the market so that you can know more about so if i take an expansion joint board just google and you will get the expansion joint board or you can google shalitex board you will get a lot of filler boards so these are used as fillers in between the joints so that will act as a filler between the joints here and you have a variety of materials available so you can google and get the information now there are advanced products available which can be connected so if you look at this particular product you can see here a wall joint expansion parking joint expansion podium joint expansion all these are 
going to resist slight sliding due to the seismic action as well. So if you look at the roof joint expansion here, you can see there are two kind of things here. So I'm going to click on one of it and then I'm going to show you this. So they have specification. So these are having capability to undergo seismic and higher thermal movement. So they are giving the type and the join width and what will be the visible width and the movement possible because of this. So it's a join that will let you let your structure move slightly under seismic activity. And also please note that this gap is not going to be 10 millimeter and all that when you are in a higher seismic zone and when you are having a tall building and when you are designing this could be a larger gap. So the conventional filler materials may not work. You may need slide cover like this so that your gap is covered effectively and it doesn't have leaks and it also have the thermal and also the seismic movement ability. So I also suggest you to read my previous blog which is here in civilera.com. You can go to civilera.com and then click on blog and then look for it or you can remember this particular link. You can type this link or you can go to blog and find that as well. So if you click on blog civilera.com blog then you will have to come down because this I had written some time back but you will get that information there will be more information that you have in this particular blog about when you need expansion joint and all other requirements I have explained here in this particular blog. Four reasons to have separation joints in buildings. I also have an additional video in that particular blog which you can see and that's also there in the YouTube. So you can as an additional read look at this particular video and the blog for your full understanding on separation joints. So thank you for seeing this particular video and blog. Let's catch up in another video very soon. Thank you very much.